Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here, general manager at DeMarcoSports.com, because that's what it says at the bottom of the screen. And we are in week number four of this college football season, a season that is motoring along, even though we really haven't hit conference play and most of the power four conferences yet. Listen, I have maintained over the years that, and you've heard me say this many times, that I don't celebrate the wins, nor do I lament the losses. And case in point, last week, I entered last weekend nine and four with my NFL and college football plays dating back to the start of the preseason. And if you think it's easy to win in the preseason, I've got another thing to tell you. But I lost on Thursday. I lost on Friday. I lost on Sunday. And then the cherry on top, my hometown Eagles, right there on the verge of snatching a cover from the jaws of defeat. Well, you know, that corny joke about prevent defenses. The only thing prevent defenses do is they prevent you from winning or covering. And you saw how the Falcons, Kirk Cousins, just sliced them and diced them to death and won the damn game outright. 0-4. It's happened before. It'll inevitably happen again. It's why I've also said over the years that not only as a handicapper, but as a gambler, you have to have what I like to call selective memory deficit to be able to forget about the losses. Because if you dwell on a losing day or a losing week, you will never be able to move past that and focus on the next task at hand, the next game, the next set of games, the next weekend's worth of games. It just happens. And I always say that you have to just accept the fact that you're going to lose before you place your first bet. That's reality. Because if you think you're going to win every day, oh, I've got some great swamp land down in Florida for you. I've got a bridge in Brooklyn that I'll be more than willing to sell you. That's just the fact of life. That's how it goes. So listen, I've got four plays here for the Saturday card that uh, we're going to talk about. And let's get to it. Um, And in terms of my best bets here on the uh, uh, video reporting college football so far, hey, they've hit two out of three. I will say that pick on Arkansas last week. That was a stupid play, was it not? Um, (laughs) He never came close to uh, getting the cover. But let's try to cash in with the best of the worst when it comes to the complimentary plays here for this week's card. And we begin, ladies and gentlemen, with the Washington Huskies. Now, those of you that are sharp may have recalled that two weeks ago, I had a very rare 39 release, only the 34th that I've ever released in college football in 23 years since I created DeMarcoSports.com, and it was Texas going to the big house and getting the job done against Michigan. So, as you also know, I like the press to action. Nine and four start in college and pro football. Press the action because what do we gamble for in the first place if you're not building a bankroll and then putting in the play and pressing the action when you're hot? You don't walk away from the roulette table when you're hot or the wheel. You don't walk away when you're hot in any gambling situation, do you? So I pressed the action again last week. I came back with the 35th ever, 39 play with Washington in the Apple Cup against Washington State. Well, you know what happened there. Uh, Washington naturally lost that game. I'm also not one of those guys, and many handicappers in this industry will do this, and some gamblers will do it well, who after a team loses for them, they say, oh my God, this team screwed me and I'm never going to use them again. Did the team screw them or did you screw yourself because you backed that team? I've never heard such a childish thing uttered by so many handicappers, including guys at this site in my life. It's ridiculous. It's total BS. That word I can say, correct? I can use the acronym, but um, or the initials. So I'm coming back with Washington minus 10 and a half against Northwestern. Now, Washington, this, of course, is the Huskies' Big Ten debut. They're hosting a Northwestern team that is two and one on the season. And who is Northwestern beat? Miami of Ohio, 13 to six at home. And Eastern Illinois, 31 to seven at home. Big effing deal. And they lost to Duke, 26 to 20. Hmm. Northwestern. What is the Wildcats problem? Quarterback. They've got two quarterbacks and they've given each one a start so far. And the offense has still got the same old problems that the Northwestern offense has had the last couple of years. 12 for 38 on third downs. That's the 11th worst conversion rate in power for conference play. And even worse, one of the reasons that they're failing to convert on third down is that they're going into third down scenarios needing an average of eight yards to convert because on first and second down, they suck too. 
So I'm more than willing to take Washington here because let's face it, if Washington had won last week, this line would be 16, 17. So we're getting Huskies at a deflated price. Now, Washington has some things that it has to do to clean up its game. 16 penalties for 135 yards against the Cougars last week. But listen, they still got a run game that's productive with Jonah Coleman, the guy from Arizona who followed Jed Finch to Seattle. Uh, it's averaging 172 yards a game. Um, Will Rogers still doesn't look comfortable in the offense, but listen, he didn't look comfortable last year at Miss State either because he's not playing that air raid system. But Washington still has more offensive talent and is the better team. So I'm willing to lay the 10 and a half here at home with the Huskies. The next play will probably surprise you, but I'm going to go with Indiana and lay the 28 and a half at home against Charlotte. How about the job that Kurt Signetti has done? Coming over from James Madison, took a lot of his JMU players with him, used the portal in a very unique way, went for experience, whether it was on the FBS or FCS level, rather than going for potential to restock the program in Bloomington, a long downtrodden program. And the results have been very obvious, right? I think the most important addition that he made was he went out and got a quarterback in Curtis Rourke, who, remember, was the MAC Offensive Player of the Year just a couple of years ago when he had 25 touchdowns and four interceptions and hit 69% for the Bobcats. So the Hoosiers are off to a 3-0 start. Three more wins. They're going to bowling. Hard to believe, right? Not really. Listen, they opened up with a 31-7 win at home against Florida International. No big deal. Then they crushed Western Illinois 77-3. Went to Hawaii last week and just handed the Bruins their hats. Now, UCLA is not that good. But how about the performance by Curtis Work? Again, playing so well. 25 for 33, 307 yards, four touchdowns, nine for nine on third downs for 128 yards, finished the game 307 yards passing, four touchdowns in that 42-13 to 13 win. For the season, already 755 yards and seven touchdowns versus uh, zero interceptions. Now, Charlotte, one and two on the season, um, lost at home to James Madison, Signetti's old team, uh, lost to uh, UNC 38-20, to 20, had to rally from 17 points down in the third quarter to beat Gardner-Webb last week at home, 27-26. And they rallied behind their third-string quarterback because, remember, they started the season with Max Johnson, the guy who played at Florida last year. He got hurt. Then their second-string quarterback uh, got hurt as well. And their third stringer, who started five games last year, I know this is confusing, he came on, had a great fourth quarter, led them to touchdown drives on three of his four possessions, hit 11 of 12 passes, and that led them to the victory against Gardner-Webb. But listen, this guy isn't Joe Montana here, okay? Uh, Trexler Ivy last year uh, in 10 games, five of them starts, was just a 55% thrower with four touchdowns and 10 interceptions. And this um, Charlotte 49ers defense is not any good. I mean, gave up 390 yards to Gardner-Webb, okay? An FCS team. Gave up 490 yards to UNC. Gave up 413 yards defensively to James Madison. I think Indiana is not going to suffer a letdown here. I think this is going to be a beatdown instead. So I love the Hoosiers in this spot. You see at the bottom of the page, if you've never been to DeMarco Sports before and you've never taken advantage of the one day all access pass, I don't know why not. You get my best bet and the best bets of every single handicapper at the site for free, no strings attached, any two days you want. You pick the days. You want it today, meaning Saturday. You want it tomorrow as well, Sunday's NFL. The choice is yours. And free means free. There are no strings attached. And I've done it for the last 20 plus years because I think it's the best way for you to get a sense of what we do, looking at our picks, looking at our analysis, and making an informed decision because the plays are free. Again, if you bought the All Access Pass, You'll get all the plays for $99 on Saturday, $99 on Sunday, and you're getting hundreds of dollars of plays for free, but you're getting it, again, for free. So check it out, the two-day all-access pass over at demarcosports.com. Your next complimentary play, I'm going to go with USC. 
minus the six. The line has moved from five to six at Michigan because I don't see much that Michigan can offer here. Uh, Change quarterbacks going with a guy who has made seven pass attempts in three years. Uh, I'm really concerned as I do this video report for you on Wednesday morning. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if they're best pass receiver, their tight end, Cortland Loveland, who suffered an arm injury in the win against Arkansas State last weekend, is going to be available. I mean, this is a guy they compared to Travis Kelsey. This is a guy who's a projected first-round draft pick, a guy who already has a team-high 19 catches in two and a half games. So you've got a new quarterback. Your best receiver, I don't know if he's going to play. I do know that USC is coming off the uh, the bye you know, they, they played well offensively in the 27-20 win in Las Vegas against LSU. And they, let's face it, they played well defensively as well. And then they beat up Utah State at home 48-0, uh, pitching the shutout. You know, uh, their new defensive coordinator who came over from UCLA, Lynn, has the team playing well, only gave up 190 yards to Utah State. And again, I understand Utah State is a downtrodden team, but they're playing with confidence. And let's face it, the latest USC quarterback excelling in Lee and Riley's system, uh, Miller Moss, only played two and a half quarters against Utah State, threw for 229 yards, and that was off the 378-yard performance against LSU. So I'm more than willing to lay the points. Now, this is the iffy play. Oklahoma State is a two and a half point underdog against Utah. Now, you know Cam Rising is coming back for this game or is expected to come back as I do this report again for you on Wednesday. He missed half the Baylor game two weeks ago because he suffered a tear, a cut on his right ring finger, which of course is his throwing hand. Uh, the first six quarters of action he played this season, he looked great. This of course is his seventh season. He's expected back and I know Utah has a stout defense. I know Utah is 3-0. They beat Southern Utah 49-0. They beat Baylor 23-13. They were up pitching a shutout in that game and rising left. And they won at Utah State without rising 38-21. But I ask you, is Baylor any good? Not really. Utah State and Southern Utah? Eh. And now they're going to Stillwater. I will grant you that Oklahoma State has some questions defensively. I mean, you know, they're coming off the 44-20 win uh, against South Dakota State. They needed double overtime to rally from a double-digit deficit to beat Arkansas 39-31. to And they beat uh, Tulsa on the road 45-10. to But they can put points on the board. And they also, I think Alan Bowman is also a seventh-year uh, player as well. Their quarterback God, he's, you know, he's had a great season already as well. 67% completions, uh, 967 yards, eight touchdowns, has not been sacked once in three games. Great offensive line play. The key, I think, for Oklahoma State here is getting Ollie Gordon Jr., their top running back, going again. Last two games, 17 carries in each and a total of 90 yards. Uh, this after going for 126 yards in the season opener. But, of course, that was against a nobody, right? Um, but I just think Oklahoma State is the underdog here, and I think they can win this game outright because I think people are buying, at least in my estimation, buying into the Cam Rising mystique in Utah, the mystique of how good the Utes are, blah, 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 and staff defensively. But they haven't played anybody, and they're on the road, and this is going to be a tough environment. And I just went and put it by Mike Dundee's team to win this game outright. So again, you know, you watch this to be entertained. You watch this to get my opinions. This is not a tremendous play. It's the worst of the worst, shall we say. So let's rank the selections. Again, I think the best bet here, my second favorite play on today's card, outside of my best bet, which is over at DeMarcoSports.com, would be Washington. Number two, Indiana. Uh, number three, USC, and then number four, Oklahoma State. Okay, you've got my advice. You've got my plays. Go forth. Make some money. Good luck, everybody, and check out the NFL video report when it's up and available. Good luck, everybody, and we'll talk to you again next week.